Hello, welcome to the uh, second lecture on uh, software engineering in the SAGESAT series uh, 2018. In the first class, we discussed about the modeling, definition of modeling, need for modeling in software engineering and what are the ways to model context modeling and activity diagrams and we have seen the <coughs> uh, examples etcetera. Continuing on the same, we will discuss today about the <coughs> interactive interaction uh, modeling techniques. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, chapter 5 of system modeling in Somerville textbook and uh, review of lecture 1 is we have understood what is modeling, justify why modeling is required before building a software system, appreciate fundamental system modeling perspectives of context and activity diagram and today we are going to discuss about interaction, structure and in the next class about the behavior modeling etcetera. Interaction models, what is interaction model? Once we have defined the context we have seen in the context model, the idea is to define the environment in which the system is expected to work and the other systems that are going to be present along with this system which may impact the working of the system or have effect on the working of our proposed system. Now, coming to interaction model, the environment and other systems will interact with our proposed system and we have to model so that we know what is the input to our system and what is the output from our system, who is giving input to the system and who is using the output of the system. That means, who and what, what our system is expected to do, these are the details that will be provided by the interaction model. So, this will identify the user requirements in a much better way. Every system is built keeping some purpose in mind or some requirements of the user. When we represent this symbolically or graphically, it will be very clear what is the input to the system, what is expected of the system or what the system is expected to do on the input what is the output. So, interaction modeling helps to understand the communication process between system to system and system to user interaction. Modeling system interaction helps us understand improve the system performance and dependability because interaction models will convey us the sequence of operations that take place and in the process we can make the performance and dependability much better understand and design a better system. Use case diagrams and sequence diagrams may be used for interaction modeling. Today we are going to discuss about how to use use case diagrams and sequence diagrams for interaction modeling. Basically interaction modeling requires an input, who is providing this input, what input is being provided, a process or a task, what is to be done with this input or the uh, request uh, for any service and the output that is provided by this task or the process which is consumed or which is used by the subsequent system. The provider of input is generally considered as person or may be a system also, usually they are called as actors. 
and then the task or the process itself is known as use case. So, we have two entities here recognized and they are the actors, the use case and the connectors. Connectors are nothing but lines uh, that are annotated with the description, so that what actually these connections will do. Use cases were developed originally to support requirements elicitation and now incorporated into the unified modeling language. When the actual use case is represented symbolically or pictorially, it is very easy for all the stakeholders to understand what is expected of the system and what is going to be designed. So, that understanding between the uh, customers and the developers and the users will be clear. Each use case represents a discrete task that involves external interaction with a system. This external interaction is through actors or may be other systems. Actors in a use case may be people or other systems. Represented diagrammatically to provide an overview of the use case and in a more detailed textual form. Because use case alone may not convey all the details, some amount of text is used, so that the exact task or the request that is given by the actor and the task that is done by the use case is annotated in the form of textual format. We will see now the definition of use case modeling. A use case specifies the behavior of a system or a part of a system and is a description of a set of sequence of actions including variants that a system performs to yield an observable result of value to an actor. Three things are important here. The behavior of the system and set of sequences or actions and the result of value to the actor. Another definition is from UML reference manual. An actor is an idealization of an external person, process or thing interacting with a system, subsystem or class. An actor characterizes the interactions that outside users may have with the system. With this definition, we will go forward to see how actually a use case is represented with examples. This is an example of a use case modeling. UML has a graphical notation as uh, I have already said, summarizing use cases into use case diagrams. Use case diagrams are having the three uh, symbols, the actor symbol, the use case symbol and the line or the association. A rectangle contains the use cases for a system with the actions listed on the outside. An example that is shown here is a vending machine. A vending machine may be having multiple types of users or actors. They may be customers, they may be repair personnel or they may be loaders who uh, load the system with the beverage or whatever it is. So, the tasks that are to be done is a customer will buy the beverage. That means, buy beverage is actually a use case, customer is the actor in this case. In the second case, the actor is repair technician and the task that he will perform is perform scheduled maintenance or perform repairs. In the third one, the actor is the stock clerk and then the use case is load the items. We can see the very similarity of this system with another example known as ATM, teller machine. Exactly the same thing will work. A customer will do the transaction. Instead of vending machine, we have to say simply ATM and a repair technician will do scheduled maintenance or make repairs and the stock clerk 
will load the currency into the system. So, like this any system can be represented through use case modeling. A stick man denotes the actor with the name placed below the icon. Solid lines connect use cases to participating actors and the name of the system is written near a side of the rectangle. Name within an ellipse denotes a use case. So, within an ellipse whatever is written is a use case and the text that is written below the actor is the uh, stick man is the actor and the association is through solid lines and the system is represented as a rectangle. Now, more uh, details about the actors and other things. An actor is a direct external user of a system. The meaning of a direct external user is that if a repair person is sent by a manager, the manager is not an actor because manager has interacted outside the system with the technician. So, technician is actually the external user and an actor is a direct external user of the system. An object or a set of objects that communicates directly within the system, but that is not part of the system. Examples, customer and repair technicians are actors of a vending machine. Traveler, agent and airline are actors of a travel agency system. User and administrator are actors for a computer database system and we can say any number of uh, uh, like for example, stock clerk and uh, uh, customer they are actors for an ATM system. Actors can be persons, devices or other systems anything that interacts directly with the system. Like for example, if a user gives or an actor gives a request to a system to print a document or uh, a, a text or something like that. In this case, the use case is the task of printing and the actors are the user on the one side and the printer on the other side. So, the actors need not always be persons, they can be other computer systems or uh, other processes also, they, are, they can be actors. So, in the use case modeling, an actor represents a particular facet of object in its interaction with a system. So, that means, an actor is only a role. So, the same actor can represent different objects that interact similarly with a system. Like in this example, many individual persons may use a vending machine, but their behavior towards the vending machine can be summarized by the actors, customer and repair technician. Each actor represents a coherent set of capabilities for its object. That means, each actor represents a common a set of capabilities, what input they can give, what request they can put. These are coherent across each actor type. That is how the use case modeling is represented. Modeling the actors helps to define a system by identifying the objects within the system and those on its boundary. The idea is by modeling this, we will be able to identify what is actually expected of the system, define the system by identifying the objects within the system by making use of who actually is interacting with the system, what functions are expected from the system and identifying these things will help in understanding the requirements very clearly and what is the boundary of the system. That means, who is giving the input and what is the output and what is the boundary of the system. An actor is directly connected to the system. An indirectly connected object is not an actor and should not be included as part of the system model because they are outside the boundary of the system. Any interaction with an indirectly connected object must pass through actors like 
the dispatcher of repair technician from a service bureau is not an actor of a vending machine because he is outside the boundary of the system. So, each use case involves one or more actors as well as the system itself. The use case by a beverage involves the customer. The use case perform scheduled maintenance involves the repair technician. In a telephone system, the use case make a call involves two actors, a caller and a receiver. In the same way, the example we gave was the requester and a printer. An actor is not necessarily a person. Example, in an online shop, the use case checkout involves the web customer and the credit payment service because at the other end there may be uh, nobody only thing the system will take care of it which is actually the credit payment system. So, concluding we can say actors may be connected to use cases only by associations. Here we have student interacting with the registrar and building system via a registrar for courses use case. So, for example, student and register for courses which is having a billing system and which is having interaction with the register for the courses. This is use case representation. Now, we will come to our mental uh, health clinic and patient monitoring system uh, transfer data use case. This example is taken uh, from the prescribed textbook. Uh, there is a medical receptionist and the patient record is a system which is represented as an actor and the medical receptionist he can or she can update patient data or request patient data. The patient data is the task and patient record is the system where it will either deliver the request or it will update the record. Now, here the arrows need not be having uh, arrow head or the lines need not be having a directional symbol. It is given only to give an idea of who initiates the request. Formally, the lines need not be having directional symbols or lines need not be arrows. Now, the actors may be connected to use case only by associations. Use cases in the uh, mental health clinic, patient monitoring system, actor is medical receptionist. Actually, medical receptionist can have request for registering the patient or they can register the patient, unregister the patient, view the patient, view patient data and contact patient. They are all actually tasks that are done by the actor. In this case, the actor is medical receptionist. The tasks are or the use cases are register patient, unregister patient, view patient, view patient data, contact patient. From this, it will be very clear in what way we have to design the application. That means, we have identified what are all the functionalities and who is the user and what type of uh, menus must be there in the screen. Like for example, if the medical receptionist logs into the system, he must be provided with these options, he or she must be provided with these options about registering the patient, unregister the patient, view patient, view patient data, contact patient. That means, these are related to the tasks that are to be designed into the system that have to be accessed by the user and in this case the user is an actor which is a role. So, a user in the role of a medical receptionist must have access to these functionalities. Now, we have identified what are the functionalities that are required and who are the users through use case that is the benefit of use case modeling. The use case modeling to make it more clear, 
it can be represented as a tabular description whereby we will identify what is the use case name which is in this case transfer data who are the actors the actors are medical receptionist and patient record system and the description is a receptionist transfers data from the medical health clinic patient monitoring system to a general patient record database that is maintained by a health authority the information transferred may either be updated personal and uh, information address phone number etc are a summary of the patient's diagnosis and treatment patient's personal information treatment summary is the data and this data is not only for updation but also for query it can be for query also stimulus is user command issued by medical receptionist to indicate the initiation the arrow is shown but formally it is not necessary the line will very well indicate the interaction response is confirmation that patient recording system has been updated and comments are the receptionist must have appropriate security permission login or something like that to access the patient information and to update the patient recording system so tabular description will give what functionalities to be built those functionalities what they have to do what is the data that is being requested or that is being provided and how to update what is to be updated and about the comments with required appropriate functionality or appropriate security permissions that is required by the actor so this will give us it will allow us to proceed with the actual design of the system once we have understood and represented the requirement through use case now let us take another example of weather station uh, use case in which case the use cases are start up shut down report calibrate and test and the weather station attendant or user is the actor the user can start up the system the user can shut down the system the user can request for a report the user can calibrate and the user when i say user actually it is considered as actor in this case the actor can test but there could be several roles for the user a tester may be a technical person who is an actor who tests the system in this case the actor will take the role of a tester so we will represent one of them as the in the tabular form the system is weather station use case is report actors are weather data collection system and weather station the data is the description of the activity the weather station sends a summary of the weather data that has been collected from the instruments in the collection period to the weather data collection system the data sent are the maximum minimum and average ground and air temperatures the maximum minimum and average air pressures the maximum minimum and average wind speeds the total rainfall and the wind direction as sampled at 5 minute intervals this whole thing actually covers the use case of report so now we know that uh, to build a functionality of report we have to collect all this information which will help us in designing the system the stimulus is the weather data collection system establishes a modern link a modem link with the weather station and request transmission of the data that is the stimulus the stimulus is actually coming from the end user or the actor who establishes a modem link with the weather station and request transmission of the data the response is 
the summarized data is sent to the weather data collection system and comments are weather stations are usually asked to report once per hour, but this frequency may differ from one station to the other and may be modified in future. All this information will give us input to our design and to design our uh, tasks and then processes so that the weather station can be designed in a uh, better way. Now, having used the uh, use cases for representing the interaction model, the next one is the sequence models. In the use case, we saw what are all the use cases that have been requested or performed, but it did not give us indication about the sequence of operations. The sequence of operations is also part of the interaction and this is represented by sequence models. The sequence models show the sequence of object uh, interactions that take place between the actors and the objects within a system. Sequence diagrams are part of the UML and are used to represent the sequence model. The objects and actors involved are listed along the top of the diagram with a dotted line drawn vertically from these. Time is represented vertically. So, models are read top to bottom. We will see the picture in the next slide. Interactions are represented by labeled arrows. Different styles of arrow represent different types of interaction. A thin rectangle in an object lifeline represents the time when the object is the controlling object in the system. Okay. So, the top rectangles are the objects and here is the actor medical receptionist and the dotted line from each actor is drawn vertically and a narrow rectangle is drawn to indicate the uh, activity that is taking place, request and response etcetera. So, now the sequence of requests or tasks that is requested is shown as from flowing from one narrow rectangle to other narrow rectangle and in the sequence is shown as though vertically it is coming down. For example, we have view info of patient ID report info of patient ID and authorize info. That means, when the request is made to the patient information system, it goes into the medical health clinic and PMS and from there it looks for authorization. If the authorization is found to be ok, then the request is delivered. So, now we have seen today the interaction modeling where we have seen use case diagrams, how to use use case diagrams, what is the use of it and sequence diagram for viewing the patient information, the medical receptionist triggers the view info etcetera we have seen and we will continue in our next class with the sequence diagram and behavioral and structural models. Thank you.